In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Salam alaikum, everyone. My name is Sarah, and um, thank God for this occasion to congregate and nourish our souls. Many thanks to the organizers and facilitators of this 2018 Submitters Conference. My speech is about wisdom and kind enlightenment. God willing, I will talk about metaphysics, philosophy, and the responsibility of submitters in the Quran. In my youth, I took a very determined path as a student at the university. I did my best to take enough philosophy courses to account for a degree. Back then, I was new to submission. My ego was still getting the best of me. My ego wanted me to be a self-made intellectual. The word enlightenment was attractive. Competing to publish books and articles in scholarly journals was how academics, academic people advanced. So I gathered my credits from classes, advice from teachers, and approval from the teachers to become a professor in the history of philosophy. Today, I thank Almighty God, who in his infinite grace had a different plan for me. Instead of becoming a scholar of philosophy and history, I became a mother, a student of the Quran. Metaphysics is a type of philosophy. Aristotle calls it the first philosophy, or wisdom. Metaphysics means beyond the physical. And philosophy means love of wisdom. Philosophy and metaphysics have been foundational teachings of the universities for hundreds of years. Today, philosophy courses like logic and critical thinking teach students to be better analytic thinkers. But beyond that, how can people cultivate wisdom? If wisdom means, if philosophy means love of wisdom, and as submitters we know wisdom is knowledge with inspiration from God, who would avoid giving God, the source of all wisdom, due credit? Surah 44, smoke. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Ha Mim. And this enlightening scripture, we have sent it down in a blessed night, for we are to warn. In it, the scripture, every matter of wisdom is clarified. It is a predetermined command from us that we send messengers. Surah 17 reads, Quran is wisdom. This is some of the wisdom inspired to you by your Lord. You shall not set up any other God beside God, lest you end up in Jehenna, blamed and defeated. I found in my time at the university that this purified Quran is not accepted, nor is it considered by the crafters of the classes at the departments. If a Quran was required for a religion class, it is a difficult and poor translation, making the message inaccessible to read and not comparable to the easy translation of the Messenger of the Covenant. In the course study of philosophy, subcategories like history, logic, ethics, metaphysics, and epistemology, which means theory of knowledge, are all core class requirements for a degree. None really stress scripture, devotion, or worship. Even a philosophy of religion course is just a survey of the human ideas about the scriptures. The, course, the source of wisdom is not mentioned, nor is the fact that he is the only source of wisdom, and beyond and bestows it upon whomever he wills. God bestows wisdom upon whomever he wills. Surah 9, 32. They want to put out God's light, 
with their mouths, but God insists upon perfecting his light in spite of the disbelievers. I learned that the discipline of philosophy has divisive polarities, such as Western and Eastern philosophy, analytic and continental philosophies, rationalism, empiricism, so many branches direct the focus to what divides rather than unites wisdom. There are whole courses on providing the exist, on proving the existence of God. Apparently it is a philosophical problem, a subject of debate. When I read these scholars' works, I read the scholars' works and experienced the very, very secular system of the classes. I had to conclude that wisdom at the university is in sharp contrast with wisdom of the revelations of the Quran has been hijacked by the devil. Surah 2, 255. No one attains any knowledge except as he, God, wills. We have been informed by the messenger that this world is the devil's kingdom. And we also know that we are the submitters of a new era. And Satan will throw up his hands. He will throw up his arms and declare his failure. Surah 57, iron. The intelligent alternative. Therefore you shall, ayah 21. Therefore you shall raise towards forgiveness from your Lord and a paradise whose width encompasses the heavens and the earth. It awaits those who believe in God, his messengers. Such is God's grace that he bestows upon whomever he wills. God is possessor of infinite grace. Subhanallah. I looked to the history department for philosophy and wisdom and found that the word enlightenment has been hijacked by the devil as well. Enlightenment means the state of being both spiritually aware or wise. Enlightenment is also an established historical era some, of some 17th and 18th century European scholars, mostly English and French. These guys made the self and the mind and thinking paramount to the spiritual teachings. The most famous one is René Descartes. He said, the existence of a benevolent God is logically necessary for the evidence of the senses to be meaningful. That's a mouthful. They call that the ontological argument for the existence of God. I see this as a diversion from scripture because it demands a physical or sensory proof of God's existence. These thinkers of the age of reason were called enlightened for rejecting authority of the church and state, and maybe they had reason to. There was corruption then. However, metaphysics that is not concerned with our relationship to the Almighty, God ultimately leads people like that into, to be stuck in disbelief. Philosophers of the age of reason were agents for inflating human egos. Descartes has a whole branch of philosophy devoted to him that is today taught and revered. The catchphrase, I think, therefore I am, is a pinnacle of what is known as Cartesian philosophy. The duality of the mind and body are set up as philosophical problems. These people were stuck explaining how the immaterial mind or soul could influence the material body in courses where I is presented as the first and foremost or most important thing to acknowledge, the glory of the creator is downplayed. Submitters will always take that as a warning sign in any situation. Surah 16, 23. Absolutely, God knows everything they conceal and everything they declare. He does not love those who are arrogant. Arrogance, as we know, is Satan's trap because he sneaks it in when self is studied in isolation from the source that brought it into existence. Today, Enlightenment philosophers are still permanent part of coursework in Western society. I will never forget the day the Catholic priest, St. Thomas Aquinas, got credit for the best version of the proof of God. They call it the cosmological theory for the existence of God. It is arguably straight out of the Quran, but rebranded after 600 years to give credit to a Catholic priest. At least he rightly called God the proper name, the prime mover, or that 
than which nothing greater can be thought. Satan loves to confuse and make things more complicated than they are. He is, after all, the king of chaos. Today, the best enlightenment is being knowledgeable enough to distinguish with the Quran as your guide. By God's leave, the people born in the new era can be guided to stay grateful, humble, and navigate this life towards an eternal paradise. Let's avoid pitfalls of crediting anything to ourselves. Let's try submitting it all to God. The course of our, each of our days revolves around the Creator. Knowing the angels are helping us bring us closer to certainty. As submitters, we strive and rejoice in the unseen forces of good. The cheerful, with, to cheerfully re rejoice for the unseen seems like a mad pursuit to people preoccupied with this worldly life. And God willing, we persist. Friedrich Nietzsche wrote, those who hear not the music think the dancers mad. We hear the music of God and we are dancing to it, towards the light of a perfect creator. Surah 76, the human, 27. These people are preoccupied with this fleeting life while disregarding just ahead of them a heavy day. We know, if we know, if we know the true metaphysics and philosophy, then there is a great responsibility. God tells us in the Quran that he makes it easy for us. How? Surah 54, 15. We have set it up as a lesson. Do any of you wish to learn? 17, we made the Quran easy to learn. Does any of you wish to learn? We focus. We, of course, means God and his angel and his messengers, while the devil schemes to complicate matters regarding wisdom, God makes it easy for us. He commands us. Surah 96, read in the name of your Lord who created. I always get goosebumps when I read that one. <laughs> and read the Quran from cover to cover, Surah 73, 4. Think about how God's messenger shares the message with wisdom and kind enlightenment. Abraham was chosen by God in Surah 11. Indeed, Abraham was clement, extremely kind and obedient. Moses, how nicely he talks to the tyrant Pharaoh by God's grace in Surah 20, 44. God commands him, speak to him nicely. He may take heed or become reverent. Muhammad, the prophet, was known to be a good listener. In Surah 961, it reads, some of them hurt the prophet by saying he is all ears. Say, it is better for you that he listens to you. He believes in God and trusts the believers. He is a mercy for those among you who believe. Those who hurt God's messenger have incurred a painful retribution. The messenger of the covenant, Rashad Khalifa, is another example. You listen to his audios, you see his videos. He is calm, he is kind, his expressions are an example. Finally, we, res we are responsible. The commandments that have been given you know, to us by God, he revealed it through the, he revealed it to our hearts through the hidden secret. Uh, we need to be aware of our responsibility. Uh, Surah 16, how to spread God's message. You shall invite to the path of your Lord with wisdom and kind enlightenment and debate with them in the best possible manner. Your Lord knows best who has strayed from his path and he knows best who the guided ones are. Peacefully, cheerfully, let's give the message of God as our teacher Let's give the message with God as our teacher. He is omniscient and he is watching us. He knows all of our innermost intentions all of the time. This assurance can be, oh, I'm sorry, I wanted to say he knows all of our innermost in, intentions all at the same time. Like, that's another amazing uh, dimension of God's grace. This assurance makes it easy for us and um, to him belongs, in Surah 1652, to him belongs everything in the heavens and the earth, and therefore the religion shall be devoted absolutely to him alone. 
Would you worship other than God? However we give the message, let's remember to stress the destructive and unforgivable sin of idolizing something other than the creator. The unforgivable sin. It does not, God does not forgive idol worship if maintained until death. And he forgives lesser offenses for whomever he wills. Anyone who idolizes any idol beside God has betrayed, has strayed far astray. A simple definition of idolatry is be, be, believing that anything beside God can help you. If you make sure to define and explain idol worship in a cheerful way, you can feel your heart saying, God will take it from here. It's as easy as that. You become a cheerleader for God, and you, not, you are not alone. Surah 17, 44. Everything glorifies God. Glorifying him are the seven universes, the earth and everyone in them. There is nothing that does not glorify him. But you do not understand their glorification. He is clement, forgiver. Life is a test. It is a gift from God and a true blessing to accept with certainty that God alone can turn your sins into credit. Satan's role is to divert us. We should be very careful not to make our egos our God. Advocate knowing God first in order to know yourselves, ourselves, not the reverse. Remember that Satan in 2.30, Surah 2, Ayah 30, got God's permission to be king on earth. And the messenger of the covenant is God's way of telling us that Quran is the source of our salvation. We are responsible to nourish our souls and apply Quranic wisdom and kind enlightenment when sharing the message. God willing, our sincere and unwavering devotion to him will bring us closer to him. His mercy is so humbling when, he, when we remember these verses. This is a proclamation for the people. Surah 3, Ayah 138. This is a proclamation for the people and a guidance and enlightenment for the righteous. 139. You shall not waver, nor shall you grieve, for you are ultimate victors if you are believers. 4520. This provides enlightenment for the people and guidance and mercy for those who are certain. Surah 58. This is an enlightenment and a reminder for every pious worshiper. Let's rejoice in the proven truth. I would like to end with this profound surah, inshallah. Surah 110, triumph. When triumph comes from God and victory, you will see the people embracing God's religion in throngs. You shall glorify and praise your Lord and implore him for forgiveness. He is the Redeemer. Praise God and thank you. Uh, any questions? No questions? I guess that's good. Oh, okay. All right, mashallah. Your speech was amazing, Sarah John. Mashallah. Like, I completely relate with a lot of stuff, especially when you were going about the philosophy and, like, how science and... So my question to you is, do you think now, like, it's getting worse? Or do you think, like, with the whole understanding of, you know, um, the, the, the changing of, you know, uh, enlightenment, wisdom, and all these things, like, in media, in life, like, what do you... Uh, how do you, um, how would you say, uh, or teach this to like, or not teach, like explain this to somebody who is, you know, used to this kind of media around, you know, they're used to these, these new definitions that Satan has given us. This is not new. Satan has been doing this for yeah, yeah. hundreds of years. Okay. This, I mean, this is like philosophy has been taught like this for a long time in the Western world. Yeah. And when I recognized with certain, I mean, I was trying to put the book in the philosophy reading room. I was working in the philosophy reading room. Twice I put the book there, my dad was a witness. And they took it, I mean, there's other Quranic, there's other Quran translations, but that one is not used. That one is almost not allowed because it is 
Satan has kind of taken over, you know, you know, certain things that, I mean, you can see the, the discussion of wisdom, the definition of wisdom has been hijacked by the devil. Yeah. And so when it comes to addressing things like that for a student that goes in to answer your question, I would uh, start questioning the people who are making the curricula if anybody really wants to. I mean, I, I was not bothered by that anymore. I knew that God had, by his grace, chosen a path for me that was subhanAllah superior to any uh, academic uh, endeavor, but I think that today we do need to question it still and we need to speak up to it. We need to be advocates of righteousness in any way we can. If the occasion comes, I do address it, but right now you know, my, priori my priority is still to be a good student of the Quran and God in his grace, if I'm ready for it, will will make me um, more activist about it, you know, inshallah. Okay, thank you. Inshallah, um, yeah, amazing speech. Um, so, uh, we know God uh, talks about wisdom and kind enlightenment in 16.125, right, where God says um, how to spread God's message, you should invite to the path of your Lord with wisdom and kind enlightenment. So, um, I mean, putting that in perspective of what you just described, you know, as the real wisdom and enlightenment, how would you, um, I guess, go about uh, spreading God's word in this era? Uh, in this era, we look for any occasion, God willing, any occasion that you can, first, you have to be a good example, inshallah, and if the occasion rises where you are in a place where you feel you are ready to either share the Quran. There's a card that Brother Bahram has made, which is such a beautiful reminder. When I go anywhere, I drop it up, you know, it's, you know, God will bring it to you. I think when you are sincerely wanting to strive in his cause, he will bring you occasions where you are going to be spreading it to your neighbor. To, people know what you stand for, inshallah, you can, uh, your actions and your words and your, um, your, your active pursuit of spreading the message will, will, uh, will show in itself, inshallah. Yeah, I hope that answered your question. I'm not sure if it did. Please. Okay, my point was mostly that we need to know where wisdom comes from so that we can give due credit to God. When you're grateful for where wisdom comes from, then God will make you one of his agents of, of spreading wisdom, God willing. That's his, he put, he's the one who gives you knowledge, he's the one who gives you wisdom. So when he, your heart has become sincere enough, then you will be in a situation where, oh yeah, my neighbor, we're talking about her, you know, Christianity or my other neighbor who, you know, I don't want to affiliate with anymore because there are certain things that I know God doesn't want me to be part of or whatever. Um, you know, as long as you are maintaining righteousness, you are going, you're doing your contact prayers, you are going to Friday prayer, you are studying the Quran, your situation, your life will be shaped in a way that you are spreading the message, inshallah, to your children, to your loved ones, inshallah. Okay, just one last question from Rod here. Um, I was just wondering your thoughts about um, how you, you would, would you interpret that the philosophy and wisdom and enlightenment that the Western world now is like holds in such high regard and they use is because they are motivated by, motivated by a conjecture as something that you know, f fuels, fuels the confusion that they seek. Would you say that's something that's motivating them? Yeah. Can you redefine conjecture for me? Conjecture as far as when, when you think about philosophy, they talk about there's really no reason or purpose for anything and that everything is subjective. Yeah. Where somebody who seeks God, they believe in there's a law and there's an order. And there's something that, you know, uh, is, you know, there's an authority. Yeah. I mean, I said in part of my speech, I said yeah. they lead you to be stuck in disbelief. I mean, if you go and speak to some of those philosophy professors 
and you see the students that are doing really well in those classes, you become very wary. I mean, God, I, I mentioned it too, it was truly by God's grace that he took me out of that because I was a very determined student and I wanted to make sure that I do the best in, in the time that I had at the university. In reflection, this is 20 years ago, by God's grace, you know. I just want to make sure, like, I, I, my, my children know exactly where my stance is on where metaphysics comes in the philosophy department, so, or any philosophy that they're trying to teach you. There's no true, sincere embracing of any scripture because it's, a, it's basically, you know, all these people who rebelled from uh, scriptural teachings and corruption that was rampant all over the world. But we need, to me, this is such a gift to us that we can embrace God's word and act upon it and see how our soul is growing. This is a process that is truly a blessed process.